main event is supported by a spectacular undercard. But before we begin, a big thank you to our broadcast partner, Sky Sports, our meteor team, Wasserman Boxing, and our sponsors, Bet365, Village Hotels, Wow Hydrate, and Virgin 2. Thank you to our meteor friends and family in attendance, and of course, our audience watching on live stream. And now, please welcome the head of boxing development at Sky Sports, Mr. Adam Smith. Thank you very much, uh, but a very warm welcome. Good afternoon from St. James's Park. What a wonderful place this is. Fantastic to be back in Newcastle. It's got a special place for, for all of us in Sky Sports Boxing. And uh, wow, it was really rocking when Savannah Marshall headlined last time out in October. It was a magnificent night. We are delighted to be back again. And Ben, thank you for, for bringing us back here. Such a great card and uh, some fantastic uh, main events and some wonderful fighters uh, as well to, uh, to get going with in this area. Yeah, 100%. When we were here last time in Newcastle, it was incredible. Um, I think that really was a breakthrough moment for Savannah as well. Up until then, perhaps she hadn't headlined shows before. And this time, I've not had one question around Savannah Marshall headlining a show in Newcastle. It isn't just Newcastle fighters on the card, which I think shows the strength of Savannah's name as well, how well this has sold. People will be surprised now at, at, at the sort of crowd Savannah Marshall attracts. But to be back in Newcastle along this journey that we're going on with Savannah, the road to Undisputed, I think we're in for a big night on Saturday, and I think we've got a great card as well. Tickets have flown out, of course. It's a big defence for her uh, against Femke Hermans, former world champion herself. But, of course, all eyes, too, on a certain Clarissa Shields, who will be ringside on Saturday night. And it's got everybody talking, hasn't it? It's a, it's a mouth-watering possibility of a unification. It's a huge fight. It's the, it's the first fight we wanted to make. Um, it was the first fight we've been looking forward to for six, eight, ten months. We thought maybe it would come sooner. Savannah has to deal with mandatories, as did Clarissa. Clarissa will be here on, on the weekend, and that's the fight we all want. But Femke Hermans has been, a, has been a world champion herself. She's fought at the top level for a long time. She took Clarissa the distance. So this is a chance for Savannah to put down a marker, to, sh to do something that Clarissa couldn't once again. And then we get into the perhaps the biggest fight in the sport. Um, but as I say, we can't look beyond that. Fingers crossed for Savannah on Saturday night. But this is a tough test. Certainly can't look beyond anything in boxing. Uh, fantastic fighters up here uh, on the dais. Uh, I'm going to start with a really interesting fight. Uh, we welcome Brad Ray back from Manchester, who's been uh, fantastic so far uh, in the Boxer Sky partnership, coming off a stunning one round a demolition of Craig McCarthy on the big Khan Brooks show. Uh, he fights Lucas Indafaluma. We welcome you, Lucas, Thank from you. Uh, Namibia. Uh, some of you might remember he came over before and uh, upset Craig Cunningham. Also, that was in, in Manchester. So, Lucas, welcome back. Uh, you are the demolisher, yeah. and you've come to, uh, to really test Brad Ray, haven't you? Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I feel honored and great to be here, to be back again uh, in the UK. Beautiful country, good people. I thank you very much. And uh, I'm looking forward for the fight next, uh, this Saturday. It is uh, Brandley. He's a, good, uh, he's a good kid. And, uh, you know, all I can say to him is that uh, he, he goes as something special because he's from Manchester. Manchester is the city that I came first year when I came to the UK. Uh, I came here for a mission to take over the middleweight division in the UK. And uh, my, my journey, my, what I started, is not, I did not finish it. So this is a process. So uh, Brandley will be the next victim. And this is my hunting ground, usual hunting ground. You know, I'm going to go back with victory. So because I know experience is where I know I'll win. He has won 20 of 25. You will be the next victim, Bradley Ray. No one's managed that so far, undefeated uh, as a professional, and beginning to roll now, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> you're, too, you're too tall, aren't you, for know, the mic? Yeah, really getting there now. Um, obviously, trying to stay as active as possible. Only a couple of weeks ago, I was on the Cairnbrook undercard, and 
you know, straight away I was I was on to my manager Steve Wood, I was in Ben's ear, you know, I'm, I'm ready to go again, what have you got for me? And you know, when, when this date uh, come up, I jumped at it, um, ready to go. Obviously, another step up in opposition for me this, you know, Lucas is a good fighter, experienced, um, done the round, boxed at a good level, like you said, he's been over here before and upset the odds, but you know, that won't be happening on Saturday night. Stunning, fantastic sort of demolition of Craig McCarthy. It was all over before it began and probably one of the knockouts it will be of 2022. But you also gave us a real barn burner, didn't you, with Jez Smith last time in Newcastle. You quite like it up here, don't you? Yeah, definitely. You know, I'm happy to be back. Happy to be back. Um, hopefully Saturday night, you know, I won't be coming out black and blue like last time. But, you know, I'm looking forward to it. It's a great crowd and, uh, you know, I like coming up here, yeah. Ben, it's been a, a, a quite steady process with Brad Ray, but he's he's really burst onto the scene. Ricky Hatton keeps saying, you know, you've got to be talking about this guy. He's yeah. he's one of the hottest hopes in the country. Yeah, this is what it's about for us. I think a lot of obvious names we're expected to sign, and Bradley Prop perhaps wasn't one of them at the time. And he's so young; he's 23 years old, and we're just keeping as active as possible. All fighters at that age need activity, but they also need tough fights where they're going to learn and. He's taken it one after the other, and believe me, this is this is a tough fight. This is a guy that's had double the amounts of fights that he's had, that's knocked out half of his opponents, that's caused upsets before, and uh, he's going to present a different te test to Bradley. He's bringing experience as well, but yeah, as you say, we have high hopes for Bradley. He's dealt with everything so far, and uh, there's a lot of fighters in the UK that are avoiding him, which has meant we've had to go further afield. Um, he wants a test, and I expect him to have a, a very, very successful career. Final line, Brad, uh, he comes with confidence too. He's saying you're going to be the next victim on the list. He's going to go back to Namibia with that scalp. What's your response? Yeah, I, I'm ready to fight and that's not happening. Not a chance. You know, I, I'm no uh, Craig Cunningham. You know, I'll be sending him back in. Thanks very much, Brad Ray. Um, next to Brad is uh, a young fighter, still just 24, and someone we've got real high hope for, hopes for. He's a, a really good guy as well. Uh, he's been waiting patiently, was going to be on the, the card at Wembley last week. Now he he, he's here in Newcastle. Zach Chelly, uh, the name. Zach, uh, in with another guy who's got a great opportunity here uh, in Jack Kilgannon. Um, a couple of changes of opponents as what happens in boxing. And I think, Jack, you got the call yesterday afternoon. You've been training. You're ready to take another fight. You've won a central area championship. You're undefeated. And now you get the chance of gate crashing the big stage here in Newcastle. Did you jump at it? Yeah. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank Sky Sports for getting me on. Um, I took the fight last night at R6. Uh, I was supposed to fight on Saturday night in Wigan. Uh, and then I got this phone call, so uh, which one would I rather do, F fight on Sky Sports? Well, it's a pleasure to have you on. You, you were a good amateur uh, from the Oldham area, undefeated as a pro. What do you think you can bring that Zach Shelley hasn't seen before? Obviously, an unbeaten fighter is a dangerous fighter. Yeah, uh, just my skill set. Like I said, when I got the phone call and it was Zach Shelley, yeah, I'd jump it straight away. It's the weight above my weight, but it's risks and it's opportunities, and I'm going to grow it with two hands. And that's right. And sometimes these opportunities pay off. I mentioned to you earlier about Steve Robinson, the Cinderella man coming in at 48 hours notice, winning a world title. So you've got to take these chances in boxing, haven't you? Yeah, definitely. I'm, you know, I'm 26. Uh, when I won the central area, COVID happened and you know, it, it didn't work out then. So it's kept going back to the drawing board. This time I've been in camp really, but it's just a... Uh, a better opponent and on a bigger stage. Fantastic to have you with us and big credit to, to Jack. I'm sure Zach Jelly's really pleased about that because you've had your frustration, Zach, during lockdown. We know you've helped out in the schools being a, a teacher as well. And, and you know, you've got to do something for the family and, and when the boxing's not happening. But now you're back and I bet you just cannot wait. You're chomping at the bit to get in the ring. Yeah, I can't wait. It feels like uh, just yesterday I was in a press conference, but uh, now I'm back here again. <laughs> Hopefully at the end of this press conference on site there will be a fight, and I'm really happy Jack's here. Um, I think like five or six different people pulled out. I've had people at my school telling me, oh, I didn't get to see you last week, Zach. I was like, yeah, because I didn't fight. But hopefully um, this Saturday I'll be fighting. I wasn't meant to go back to school uh, for the past week, but I actually ended up working Monday, Wednesday, uh, Tuesday and Wednesday, so I was there working yesterday, and they were all shocked to see me because I was telling everyone, it's my last day, it's my last day. But yeah, I had to be back in school. And yeah, but they're all happy they're going to be watching this Saturday, and I can't wait for it.
the kids are ready. They'll be staying up a little bit later than usual. You're ready. Um, you're virtually unbeaten, aren't you? You had that fight that we commentated on in, uh, in the match from Garden against Jack Cullen. Very unlucky there not to come out with anything. You won the boxer tournament. Uh, you've got some real potential, haven't you, in this business? Yeah, as a super middleweight, I am unbeaten. Um, and, you know, I, I tend to keep it that way. Um, I'm looking forward to see what Jack has. He's a good boxer from Centro, a title. And yeah, he's he come forward fighter, so it'll be exciting on uh, Saturday night. Do you think it'll be a really good mix of styles because he brings that undefeated record? He's got nothing to lose. Mm. It's I think coming he's, for you. He's going to give it all, isn't he? Yeah, I mean, it's a great opportunity for him as well. He, he wins this, he's gone to big things, but unfortunately, check. I'm going to be winning. Um, of course, we're shaking hands, we're taking pictures together. It's all, it's all business, I'm dressed for business, but when it comes in the ring, it's personal, and he knows that. Ben, well done uh, to the team and yourself for, for making this match. You've made Jack's dream come true. You've got Zach a fight. He is going to be in the ring on Saturday. You've got high hopes for him, haven't you? Yeah, it's difficult with Zach. I mean, as, as he said there, we've gone through a few opponents. Diogo Costa was, was supposed to be the fight, which was a great fight. It was going to be at super middle. Then it looked as though it was going to be like heavyweight. And I think Zach would have still taken the fight. But... Um, we had to send the scales round to the gym yesterday in a check weight. He was no way near. He wasn't going to make weight. And in the end, Jack Kilgannon, an unbeaten kid with Steve Wood, who has a lot of uh, a lot of potential as well, and someone that really wants to take this opportunity. And so to take this on two days' notice, Zach and Jack, it's a, it's a credit to both of them. And that's what we want to do. We want to make sure unbeaten kids are getting in, in the ring against each other and are having it. And... Jack knows that this won't be his last opportunity for taking a fight. Zach knows that it won't. And that's what we want to encourage on these cards. And I think um, you'll start to see that on all the Sky Sports cards with, with guys that are just putting it all on the line and then know that they're going to get that opportunity again. <coughs> Too much fighters believe if they lose that O, oh, they're going to lose their career. And we need to make sure that we give them the confidence to take these fights. Totally agree with you. Good to have April Hunter back on the bill after her defeat. I'm sure she'll come again. That's what it's all about. Looking down there at my friend Johnny Nelson, lost his first three pro fights, and look, he ended up reigning as a world champion for seven and a half years. Things can happen in boxing. Well done for taking this opportunity, Jack, and we're looking forward to that fight. A mouth-watering chief support. It's a really, really good fight. When Ben told me it was made, I was, I was so pleased. You can't pick a winner. It's experience against somebody who's got so much character and charisma and someone we absolutely love to have on board in Florian Marku. But this guy next to me here, Chris Jenkins, is a serious fighter, former British and Commonwealth champion, trained by Gary Lockett, who we've got so much time and respect for. He was brilliant down in Cardiff a few weeks ago. And uh, Julius Ndongo found out that night that Chris Jenkins has got plenty left. Chris and Florian, well done again for taking this fight. It's a fantastic one. Chris, it's come to you first. Do you believe that you've just got too much experience and know-how and ability to deal with Florian Marku and maybe show him what this level's all about? Um, yeah, personally, uh, you know, the experience might tell on fight night. Um, don't get me wrong, I rate Florian Marku was a good fighter, but I just think that I'm a little bit too more experienced in this boxing game, but you know it's just going to be a great fight. And like you said, we, do, we, we just want to fight, so there was no questioning whether the fight was going to happen or not. As soon as you run Gary, as you run Magu, yep, it's on. So we'll just fight them, man. It's great to hear that, Chris, because I know you've had your difficulties. You've had a lot of bad luck through your career as well, but you, you have won those domestic titles and there's still hunger burning inside you. I think we saw that in Cardiff. Yeah, um, obviously in Cardiff, it was nice to get back out. Um, you know, I beat the former Unified World Champion, but he's, he was a lot, he was way past it. And let's be honest, you know, Florian's going to be a tougher opponent, but, you know, the fire's burning. I've got a great team around me, um, great support network and stuff. So it just keeps me focused and just, I just want to keep fighting. I know I'm, I'm, I'm no a bit of the old dog now. I'm going on 33. Been nearly 10 years in the in the pro game, but there's still life left. The old dog can teach tricks, can't he? Well, the old dog. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Just fetch. <laughs> Florian Mark is going to have half of Albania based over here, I'm sure, uh, there in Newcastle. Are you worried about that, the big support he has, the big reputation he brings with him, or is it just a case of it's a fight and you're going to go in there and do what you have to do? That is it. This 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 plain and simple. You know, um, he could have a million fans there. I'll probably have my usual five or six, but 
Uh, then they'll, they'll turn up and they'll be happy, they'll be loud enough. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's like I've said in a number of interviews, myself and Florian are fighting the better ourselves, the better family, and that's what it comes down to at the end of the day. So, you know, the best one will win on night. How good do you think he is and how do you beat him? Uh, well, simple, punch him more times he punches me. <laughs> and he is good, yeah. <laughs> so, that is simple, you know. Yeah, he's a good fighter, you know. There's no disrespect, there's no malice in it. Um, at the end of the day, this is what we do to provide. And, you know, we want to move on to bigger and better. You know, I know where I am in my career. Um, and just go to do what I go to do to get the win. Great attitude. Keep it nice and simple. Florian Markey, you step up. There's a smile on your face. There normally is. Chris Jenkins, the opponent on Saturday night. Without question, the toughest test to date, isn't it? You know, uh, I respect uh, Chris like a fighter. He have uh, gives very, very good fights. Many people, I think, avoid him. The the son of uh, Nigel Ben avoid him. You know, when he had the British title, I think many people. <laughs> but uh, his last fight was was with uh, Julius in Dongo. The the Julius in Dongo. Yes, thank you. The Julius in Dongo. I think he was pr uh, his best years gone. You know and I am a different fighter. I'm gonna show that in the Saturday. I'm really happy because this is the fight that excites me. You know, this is the fight that will show to the people what is my level. Because I think when I fight with someone like my last fight, you know, uh, it will look me also look bad. You know, but with someone like like him, I will bring my best uh, self outside and sorry, my my best self outside and. Of course, I'm gonna win. Uh, I'm gonna win excite, excite, uh, with exciting fashion. Is that your phone going for the fans trying to get <laughs> tickets? How many have you got coming? I don't know, but for sure there will be minimum 1,000 in there. <laughs> minimum 1,000. That's why we love Florian Marku, Ben, don't we? He's, uh, he's something different and he's bringing that to the table. But this is his toughest fight. It's a, it's a hard man he's got to get past in Chris Jenkins. Well done for making it. Yeah, Florian has everything. I remember when he first boxed on our shows, it was about a couple of years ago, and just the, the fans and, and, and his charisma and everything just shone through. It, was, it performed in, in, in an incredible way. And the question was, can he really fight? That was all, you know, he's had a great kickboxing career and he's had to learn boxing sort of on the job. And his development has actually been incredible given that. Now he's with Grant Smith. Now he's in a he's a he's in a proper camp. He's with proper fighters. I think he's got all the skills to get to the top, but he 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 needed some fine tuning. I think he'll admit that. And now with Grant, I think there's nothing that can stop him. And he's taking a fight here that many people would. And Chris Jenkins has has not only done British level, but been unlucky to get even further. And I think um, Chris is probably underplaying this, but uh, it's a, it's a big fight for him. And um, I'm just really glad Florian's got the chance to show how good he is. I'm glad you mentioned Grant. We talked about Gary Lockett, who was a great fighter and a fantastic trainer. Grant Smith's really developing a reputation and a stable. Of course, his son is, is a super fighter, but he's got a really good group that's enticed you to go there, Florian. How's that been, the change, and how are you developing underneath him? Uh, listen, the, the heart, I have the heart from when I was young, I can fight wherever you put me in, but something was missing, you know, and every time in the fight, my self-belief, I believe myself like no one else, but when I was in there, I was trying too much uh, for the knockout, I rushing too much things, I think now with ground, I found myself and I'm really happy, I'm really happy. <laughs> Boxing is my life, you know, people laugh with that, but I don't do nothing else. I train all day, sitting home, train. This is what I love. People laugh sometimes, say, uh, say oh, he's confident. Of course, I will be confident. This is my life. Of course, I'm, I think I'm gonna knock this guy out because this is what I love. This is my life. You know, people can't understand that, but when you dedicate all your life, the people go parties, coffee and the things and you dedicate your life in the sport, of course you will be confident. And Saturday I'm gonna think, I, I'm gonna show one more time how much I believe in myself and how good I am. And with Chris, I think he will bring out the best of me. You have passion, so do the people up here in Newcastle. I bet you're very <laughs> excited to be fighting here on Saturday. Yes, I'm really happy. You know, wherever I, I have fought in, 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 in UK, you know, the, the UK fans love fighting. And they have support. I'm really happy. You know, here my life changed. In in UK, I'm happy. I will perform for them. They will see you Saturday night. 
you've been very respectful to Chris Jenkins. That hasn't always been the case with your opponents. But what's the message to him ahead of Saturday? Uh, I have never been disrespectful to no one. Chris was respectful for me. He respects me. He says he's a good fighter. I don't have to say something bad about him. The last opponents that I fought, he, they say, oh, Florian is a kickboxer, is that, is, is this. And I show them I'm not a kickboxer. I can fight wherever you put me in. And Chris shows some respect. The respect is this Saturday morning. After Saturday evening, is no more respect about him. But till then, is the respect there. Final one from you, Ben, on this situation. The welterweights is fantastic. Chris Congo came back last week in Wembley. He'll be up here at ringside, and, and it's just a great division. They mentioned the son of Nigel as well. It's, yeah. it's some, some great fights. And, of course, we had Carl Brook in, in February too. Yeah, I just wish they'd all fight each other. And I think the thing with Florian Marku is he will be fighting them. Um, this, is a, this is a big test for him, but there's some huge fights out there for him after this. But as you say, at 147, whether it's Chris Congo, Samuel Amwe, Josh Kelly, Connor Ben, Echo Usman, the list goes on and on and on, and they need to fight each other. And Florian wants to prove that he's the best. As you say, Kel Brook, Amir Khan showed how big this division can be and showed how big you know boxing can take you know, how big the welterweight division is and uh, Florian wants to take that mantelpiece and um, this is this is the next fight on that journey <laughs>